What up, Wargamers? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Stoss, and today we have a channel first. Our very first unboxing. And you know what it is. It is... Oh! Cursed City Warhammer Quest. I got one! Ah, yes, I managed. Um, I, like many of you, uh, missed out on the pre-order shenanigans. Um, but I got myself down to my local Warhammer shop bright and early as the doors were opening. There was a few people in front of me, but I've managed to nab myself a copy. I'm super stoked. I'm pretty excited. I played uh, the old, like the first Warhammer Quest back in the 90s when I was a kid. Loved it. This is not that. Um, we know that. It's sad, but this still, it looks cool. I love the theme. I love the gothic, undead aesthetic. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm sure you are too. Ooh, I even managed to get, check this out, I managed to get one of these bad boys with the coveted extra hero card inside. Um, yeah, I was I was incredibly lucky to get this without pre-ordering as I was lining up. Um, one of the staff was like, hey, do you want the book with the card? And I was like, do you, do you have any? And he's like, I got one left. And I said, yes, sir. Yes, I will. And so, yeah, I picked it up. So without any further ado, Let's crack this bad boy open and see what's inside. Alright guys, here it is. Cursed City, Warhammer Quest. Heroic quests in the doomed city of Ulfenkarn. Super cool, super cool. Uh, so just really quickly before I start cracking this open, I want to show you some of the other cool little goodies that the, the lovely people at Games Workshop gave me with this. Um, so first of all, there was like a bunch, like uh, five art cards, which are kind of cool, numbered one to five. So we'll just have a quick look at those. We've got, uh, yep, the Cursed City, the box art, which is a lovely, nice little piece. Um, uh, we've got this bad boy, a couple of Ulfenwatch, you know, scaring a bunch of children slash killing a bunch of children. Not very PC, Ulfenwatch. Um, number three, oh yeah, looks to be like, some kind of bird's eye view of the city with one of its spires looking grim and red and black in its classic colors. Number four, oh, we've got like, like mountain skulls with moon eye. <laughs> um, look, I don't know what it is, but I dig it. It's pretty cool. I can, I can get behind that. And number five, ooh, yes, yes, we've seen this one before. I really like this. It's like a really cool stylized picture of the whole city with a bunch of symbols. I'm assuming they're some of the bad guys. We've got like the, you know, the main bad guys around here. And in fact, yes, that is their symbols like marked up there. And the big baddie himself, um, uh, the, the wolf, I don't know his name, is something, the wolf, you know, wolf boy, big, big vampire wolfy McWolf. Cool, so yeah, those look awesome. Uh, what else, they gave me, uh, they gave me this Cursed City pen. Ooh, yeah, you know, to, to, to write cursed things <laughs> pen i don't know it was kind of cool i'll take it it was free i can't see why not um this is kind of cool a uh bellacore collectible coin um so we may as well kind of un unbox this can i can i unbox it yeah there's an ant here we go there we go ant walk here into that oh cool well, it seems to be stuck Oh god, do I just rip it off? Is that how this works? Let's rip it, let's find out. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's how it works, nice. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's it's heavy, it's a legit coin. It's got the Warhammer logo on the back and the cool, you know, the eight-pointed star of chaos. I like it, it's cool. Like, I can flip this for things, I don't know. Yeah, it seems, seems all right. Oh. <laughs> um, they gave me two little badges. Love a badge of, you know, old Moon Eye Mountain Skull. Um, and a wolf. A gnarly, snarly wolf. Cool, love it, why not? Um, and then of course, yes, I also picked up, this was not for free, I bought this, the Cursed City uh, novel, which I, you know, I'll probably have a read of it, why not, you know, see what it's all about. Um, but the big reason why anybody actually bought this is this fancy little envelope in the back here. Yes, and there it is, the coveted extra hero card, Morval Olbrecht, human battle mage, lore master. What a beast. Um, yeah, yeah, cool, and give him a crack. I'm pretty sure I've got one of these models kicking around. Um, one thing that I noticed that's really fucking funny, look at this, down at the bottom here, uncaring ally. 
when another hero of the same uh, another hero on the same board tile as this hero suffers damage roll and uh, if the roll is successful game an inspire inspiration point so he's like you know he's keen when other people get hurt so he's a bit of a dog and i like that that's kind of funny um so yeah that's i'll just slide that back in there you know, nice and safe keep it secret keep it safe you know so yeah cool and that's all of my little goodies uh that came with it slash i bought on top of it uh, but without further ado let's get into this bad boy all right so i'm gonna try and open this thing without hurting myself or the box on camera yeah first unboxing people let's give it a shot um okay so here we go i'm gonna just do a little flippity slice in the in the corner here give it a little run down the side come on oh yeah was that enough yeah it's probably enough let's let's rip this shiny plastic off Ooh, that unzipping sound sexy oh oh Oh, come on, finish it. There she goes. Oh, and she's unsheathed. She's ready. Oh, bump the camera. Sorry, guys. Oh, yep. Yep. Oh, and there it is. Still quite shiny because it's a lovely glossy box. But, zit, it's happening. Um, so just quickly, I'll, um, before completely opening it, let's have a look at the back. Let's see what the back holds in store. Lovely, a lovely shot of the board and the painted miniatures and components all set up on top of it. Um, the various heroes, we've got Imelda Braskov, Jelson Darek, Dagni Holdenstock, Kulathis the Exile? Yeah, Kulathis, I think so. Um, Glaurio Van Alten the Third, Ooh, he's very fancy. Octran Glimscry, Cleona Zeitengale, and someone that I'm very excited for. I think everybody is Brutog Corpse Eater. Man, so cool. And then just a bunch of the uh, the enemies that you're going to be fighting. And there he is. It's a uh, Raduka the Wolf. Raduka. That's the guy. Very cool. Very cool. But let's uh, let's actually see what's inside the box. All right, here we go. Oh, it's got that. It's got that incredible new plastic smell. Oh man, it's filling the room. It's actually very pungent, <laughs> but it's, it's lovely. All right, and so of course, to begin with, we've got the sprues. Look at that. Uh, so this would be, oh, this looks like, no, it's kind of hard to see with everything behind it here. I'll go through the one of these, these properly as we go, but this looks like um, most of the main, like unique bad guys. You've got that big thing that's, you know, like you know half wolf half bat thing you got the the zombie um ogres which is fantastic and a bunch of the other main character kind of bad guys so this is that one we've got two more sprues of bad guys these look identical so two of the same sprue this will be just all of the uh orphan watch and it's various zombies yeah very cool, very cool. We'll put those to the side. Um, Radukar the wolf himself, that's the that's the main guy. That's him there. Very nice, all push fit models. Um, apparently from what I hear, these go together really nicely. Honestly, I'll probably end up still just kind of like snipping off the push fit bits and gluing them together because because that's how I do. Uh, and push fit, you know, it's lovely, but I'm gonna glue it. Okay, and then we have the heroes. Um, this looks like part of Brutog Corpse Eater and the uh, Caradron Overlord. I miss old dwarves, you know, Caradrons. It's a, it's a cool idea, I get that they split their main, you know, IPs, the things that they actually came up with, the Slayers, and like things like, uh, like Gyrocopters, and they made two factions based on those two things rather than you know the kind of standard dwarves that were before but I miss them man I thought standard dwarves were awesome um but anyhow and then here is the last of them uh, the rest of the heroes all there cool all right we'll go into those in a little more detail later but let's just keep cracking through what is inside this box all right we've got a uh, a grim black divider and oh that's a little disappointing 
recently the uh, the dividers have been I don't know they've been a bit more artistic than this. I mean at least it's it's not just black, but you know it's just kind of smeary red and black. But all right, cool, whatever. I can I can be fine with that. But here is the rest of the contents. Here we go, guys. This is this is the the meat and potatoes. I mean, I guess the models are kind of the meat. And these are the potatoes. Here are the potatoes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, so we got a little uh, little lovely Ziploc bag of bases. Have they all got holes? Oh yeah. So you know, you can even just slot them into bases. Lovely. Um, we've got another one of bases, not Ziploc this time. Slotter bases this time, the little slots. And you know, a couple of the big ones look like they've got the hole punches as well. Um, we have the dice. Everyone loves dice. I love dice. These look pretty great. Um, uh, yeah, we've got normal D6s that you're rolling for your, um, uh, your destiny dice and your heroes like activation dice. And then you've got the actual like action dice with the unique little pits, you know, instead of the, the classic Games Workshop D6, they've gone to these unique dice with just like successes, a fail and a critical success. But yeah, very cool. I can get behind it, that's cool. Ooh, well, we've got a, a big packet of, uh, of cards. Oh yes, and the hero and enemy cards. This is just all the cards. Activation cards, item cards, cards galore. I'm just noticing now that it's like, everything's kind of hard to see. Maybe I've got too much light, but oh well, we're, we're halfway through it. We're doing it, people. Um, so, then we've got the Cursed City, the rule book, and these are all, put together. Looks like we've got three books in here. Rule book, probably an assembly manual and something else. An adventure book maybe? I'm not exactly sure. Um, one floating base. Cool, why not? An errata. An errata, okay. Um, so, interesting. And it's for the assembly for the Caradron Overlord for Dagnai Holdenstock. I wonder I wonder what's up with that. Well, I guess I'll find out eventually. Um, and then we've got a little uh, little spruik for the Cursed City novel. I got it, thank you though. Um, oh yeah, and it just turns over to be a nice little piece of art. Why not? Very good. And then, oh, this looks like the finale um, of the board tiles. And there they are ready to be you know punched out i don't think i'm actually just gonna you know oh yep and cool and tokens and stuff on the back um and various trackers this looks like the day night tracker um and also your destiny pool they'll get locked out or like usable wounds um the enemy like this is like the priority initiative tracker i guess it would be um and a bunch of interesting tokens that i have no idea what they do but there it is. Okay, fantastic. We'll pop that to the side. And okay, yeah. The final thing, a bunch of zippy bags. Lovely, lovely Ziplocs. No, that's good to see. It's nice that they've done that because um, all these tokens here, they're gonna have to go somewhere. Um, and in these, it's nice that they've provided some, that's good. Um, I do know, however, that in Blackstone Fortress, they provided like like art Ziploc bags. They had Ziploc bags with like, you know, cool little art stuff on it. Um, it's a little disappointing to see them go backwards. Um, you know what I mean? Like the, the design team did such a great job on the components with um, Blackstone Fortress. And it's a bit, it's a bit of a shame to see it go backwards. Honestly, I would never actually have a problem with just, you know, getting Ziploc bags. But the fact that this is not as good <laughs> Ziploc bag as the ones that they put in the previous one. It's a shame. It's just a shame to see them um, roll back on quality content. But such is life. But that is it, guys. That's everything that's in the box. Um, yeah, now we'll have a, a bit of a deeper look at each of the components individually. Potentially, I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it there. <laughs> okay, guys, let's have a look at these sprues. So this first one is uh, Brutog and Dagni. Dagny, whatever. Um, man, these models look great. Brutog particularly is just such an amazing, like such a beautiful ogre sculpt. It's a bit of like, it's a hark back to ogres of old, honestly. It's a bit, of, it's almost like a Mordheim ogre. 
which is so good. If I, you know, ever start playing more time again, um, and I need an ogre, man, this guy's gonna be in the crew for sure. Um, so he looks like he's he's in a bunch of bits. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight if that's him. That could be Dagni, but minimum seven, maybe eight. Um, that's a lot of bits. And Dagni's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six? I'm not even sure what that is. Maybe seven. I think that's Dagnay's beard. It is. It's his, his little beard. Great. Um, but yeah, man, these models just look so nice. So beautiful. Cool. So that's that little bad boy. Um, and then we've got the rest of the crew. Um, uh, let's have a look at this side. So yeah, we've got uh, Jelson Derek, um, or at least that's part of him. These are kind of scattered all over the place. I think that's him there as well, over here. Jelson as well is just a beautiful model. Um, the hat is not the best. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I love a good witch hunter hat, but just the way it bends, the way it kind of like, it steeples like at the front of his head, rather than that being like a, like I would just prefer it to have been like folded down at the front. Like, I don't know, that's the kind of hat that I like. The steeple at the front is a little strange, but that is like, that's so nitpicky. It is such a beautiful model. Um, the, the, the noble as well, um, so-and-so the third, looks freaking sick. He's like a classic old, like kind of like Kislevite kind of noble. There's kind of, there's a fairly big like Kislevite theme going through all of this with like um, the, the thin moustaches and the furry hats. Uh, I know Kislev doesn't exist anymore, I get it, I'm, I'm stuck in the past, but you know what I mean, that's the aesthetic that they're going for here, and honestly, I love it, these, these, these models just are fantastic, and I'm super excited to get them painted up, um, get them built, it's all it's going to be built first, but yeah, and then eventually get them painted, but yeah, there it is, sexy, beautiful, alright, let's have a look at the bad guys. Okay, we got one of the big bad guys, Sprues here. Um, so we have this enormous, fantastic looking bat that is missing its face, which I'm sure will be on there somewhere. Um, got parts of the Ulfen Watch, which look like they're two-part models. Um, the Ulfen Watch all look fantastic as well. They're great skeleton models. Um, you know, rat swarms, which is super cool. Um, yeah, the zombies. Ah, look, honestly, I feel similar to like the people that have a grab with the zombies. Um, I, I like the theme and the idea of the like, you know, stake them down to make sure they don't turn into vampires. Um, that's super cool. I just think they maybe, they could have scattered it around a little bit. You know, some of them could have been, you know, recently risen or didn't get a chance to be like, staked or something. Again, these are minor gripes, but um, overall, they look awesome. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit much. It's it's a lot. Um, but mad kudos for Games Workshop for getting creative, man. I, I can never be upset with creativity. Um, they didn't just, you know, throw out a bunch of zombies that everybody's seen before. They went for something different and, you know, they went for it hard. Maybe a little too hard, but they went for it, and I, I have to give them kudos for that. So well done, well done, Games Workshop. Um, we have the identical sprue um, with you know the same kind of peeps with the same kinds of things. Beautiful. The sculpts, they're just fantastic. You know, it's what we expect from Games Workshop these days. They are, you know, they're top of the field. They they do good stuff. They make you pay for it. Oh boy, but they do good stuff. And then we've got the the, the big boy, <laughs> the big boy sprue um, with our, our big zombie ogres, which is so cool. Like, whereas, you know, no one's seen zombie ogres before. I, well, at least I haven't. Um, that's that's freaking sweet. We've got our, our shovel boy um, getting ready to, to, to dig up the, the dead. Um, yeah, this, this massive freaking where wolf i mean it's not a wolf i know but you know what i mean it's it's freaking sweet it's like a vargulf it's like uh vargulf has come anew which is freaking sweet oh yeah we've got like the little vampires the little like gnarly dudes that get around and the pillars that they're going to be jumping off very cool very cool and then finally ratuka ratuka the wolf um yeah he's also a pretty cool sculpt um to be honest 
I know I'm, I'm griping a bit here, but I feel like the double wolf head on the shoulders, it's a lot. Like he's just super bulky with all of this wolf pelt. Um, I, I dig like the furry hat and the beard and stuff, but I feel like maybe just one wolf shoulder would have been enough. Um, nonetheless, it's a cool model, but when I saw it, I was like, that's, that, that, okay, that's the big bad guy. I like his baggy pants, but yeah, it's just the, it's the huge, the over the top double wolf shoulders. Yeah, it's a bit much for me, personally. But there it is, that is all the sprues. Let's move on to the next components. We've got bases. Um, I don't think we need to look too much more deeply into these. They're round bases with either like punched out holes or they're slotter bases of varying sizes. Yep, bases, cool. All right, we got the dice. Let's um, let's pop them open. Let's have a look at them. There they are. Um, so we've just got white D6s, black D6s, and then the special dice. Two red, two gray, blue gray, um, and two bone white. And uh, the uh, like the, the the enemy dice, the 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 Ulfenkan dice, I guess Ulfenkan dice. A D twelve this time, rather than the the D twenty of Blackstone Fortress. Um, yeah, which seems cool. You know, keep it a little more simple. Why not? Um, let's see how it rolls. What did I get? I got a five. A five. Nah, it's below average. Could be good. Could be bad. Depends on how this game works. And um, we'll just give them all a quick little. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got some. Got some sixes there. That's pretty good. Oh yes. <laughs> um, so so yeah. The uh, the the specialty dice. You know they've just got um, like failures, successes, and critical successes. Um, Honestly, I just prefer D6s. It's just because I've grown up playing Warhammer and Games Workshop games like pretty much forever. And I just like, I like the simplicity of the D6. You know, I enjoy the systems that are built around them. Um, I, I don't mind specialty dices, but honestly, I would have preferred if, you know, they could have just figured out a way to just keep it to the old school, you know, D6s. But hey man, like, you know, I'm not here to grab. I still think it's pretty cool. I'm keen to give it a crack and see how it goes. Um, yeah. Bunches, bunches and bunches of dice. I keep hitting the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> first unboxing, hey, hey. Let's do the cards. Here we go. Oh God, oh, get a bit of, bit of ASMR. Warhammer cards for those who are so inclined. Um, so I can figure out how to open plastic containers. Bam, there it is. All right, let's, um, ooh, some of these are loose. Some of them are in nice little plastic containers of their own. So let's, let's just be careful. Let's, let's not ruin components straight away. Hey, hey, Christos. Um, okay, and then a bunch of loose cards. Blech. Loose cards, that's, that's loose. And in varying sizes. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna have to try and find varying size sleeves for all of these. Um, okay. Okay. Blade, executioner, blade. Okay, there's different traits. Quick reflexes, these are interesting, okay. Um, stalwart, lawmaster. Okay, so these must be some sort of, uh, oh, these are like level up cards for the different, the different classes. That's pretty cool. That's one thing I've heard about, um, this this compared to maybe the last couple of Warhammer quests is that it does have a bit more of a progression system for the heroes. Honestly, as someone that loves the old school uh, Warhammer quests that had, you know, a complete and utter, like a proper deep progression with level ups and stat increases and everything, the others have felt a little bit lacking in this respect. So it's very cool that, you know, that they've put, they've listened, they've put a little bit more effort into the progression. You know, it's definitely, it's a far cry from, you know, you know, 90s Warhammer Quest, but it's more and more is good. It's always good. So that's like some sort of progression card system. These look like priority cards. We've got the different uh, hero cards. 
Um, this is another change from Blackstone Fortress. They haven't got the faces, so they've only got four hero priority cards, and they'll just have a different token that you'll put on your hero, and that'll show you who it is. Um, you know, I understand why they did it. I'd prefer the face of the hero and more cards, but you know, cool. Why not? It's fine. Um, and these are the enemy ones. Oh, and they're just numbered, you know, one, two, three, four. Those have cool art, to be honest. That's that's pretty sweet. I like seeing some, you know, some proper art on these things. Oh yeah, and they're nice. Cool, very nice. Um, and then what do we got here? We have discovery cards. Oh yeah, and you know, dirtier discovery cards, more discovery things. Oh yeah, so these are like, you know, this will be when you when you loot something or search it, this will be what you got. Cool little symbol on the back. Very nice. Very nice. Um, and these will be all of your enemy cards. Oh yeah, with like a day and night, so they get more powerful at night. We've got Radikar the Wolf. We've got Gorslav the Gravekeeper. Torgilius the Chamberlain, Watch Captain Halgrim, Vagskir. Oh, yeah, Vagskir. That thing is so cool. I love that model. Um, Korsagi Nightguard. Sick. Vikros Bloodborne, Deadwalker Zombies, Corpse Rats, Bat Swarms, Ulfen Watch. And that's it. That's all of your enemies right there on the cards. Very cool. And then I'm assuming we're going to have, you know, all of your heroes. We've got Octran. We've got Cleona, we've got Dagni, Glaurio Van Elton III. I freaking love this guy. He's just, he looks so, like, so pompous. <laughs> Glaurio. Um, Brutarg, my main man. Um, uh, Kulathis the Exile. Just a really cool, like, kind of like old school wood elf. Love that. Jelson Derek. You see what I mean about the hat? You see this, like, there. I just want that to be coming down. Like a Vampire Hunter D classic hat. I still love it. It is still a freaking sweet model, but like literally if that had just dipped, it would just, I would, I would love it that much more. Um, and Captain Imelda Brasco, very cool. Got a female knight that's definitely a, a departure from what is usually happening. You know, in the past knights have been men, but I can deal, I can, uh, well not deal, I can I can dig it. I love, a, love it, you know, love a bit of female knight action, why not? Uh, Ulfen card in peril, so another tracker, and that's it. These are all our big cards done. Very nice. And then empowerment weapons. So these looks like your your weapon upgrades. Um, would have been nice to see maybe a little bit of art on the weapon upgrade. You know, to, just anything. It's aether sharpened edge. You know, a little like edge of a blade coming up. Anything, something. Um, should I open these and go through it all? You know what, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm getting tired, guys. I've been doing this for a while. Um, but there it is. These are gonna be all of your um, your items, most likely, and probably some other stuff. But there it is. That is all of the cards. Let's move on to the next thing. Let's have a look at the books. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna get that out of here. We've got some trash and shut. That's not good. Get out of shut. Get out of shut, you trash. Um, all right, let's, let's slice this bad boy open. Gently, gently is the game. Oh, come on. Come on now. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit. Surely I can get the rest. Hey, there we go. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Look at that. Look at it. Get out of here. All right, so we've got the rule book. A handy dandy reference sheet at the back, event table, hostile actions, turn sequence, and a bunch of bits and pieces. I'm not going to go through all of this, but we've got the introduction at the start, the contents, you know, feel free to pause and have a look at that if that's what you really want to do. Um, but yes, the introduction, all of the components, there they are. Ah yes, and all of the beautifully painted Games Workshop style models that I will never be able to achieve. <laughs> I mean, I'll paint them, but just not to quite this standard. Um, 
Awesome combat tutorial. There's going to be a little walkthrough. Fantastic. And then just getting straight into it. That looks super cool. Love it. There it is. And then we've got the quest book. The Cursed City quest book. Another reference sheet at the back that's very handy. Crises. Basic hero actions. Spending inspiration points. Love it. We've got our contents page. Again, feel free to pause and have a look. Um, and we've got some, some fluff, some flavor. Love a bit of fluff. An age of conflict. Dark legacy. Uh, an uneasy alliance. City on the edge of death. Very cool. Um, so just a bunch. Looks like, yeah, a ton of fluff, which I love. I'm going to be very much enjoy reading all of this. Um, but yeah, there's that picture, that little art card that I got before. Yeah, there they are. It's going to be spattered throughout all of it. Very sweet. Cool. And then there's all of our maps, the various pre-generated maps. And then, oh yes, this is like a, like a the choose your own adventure style, like read here, go there when specific things happen. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Um, ah, this is, this is the envelope. The envelope of mystery. Wolfenkahn in peril envelope. Do not open until the final assault decapitation journey has been completed. So this is like the final story event once you complete the game. Um, this is something that they did in Blackstone Fortress as well. And this will kind of set the scene for what has happened and what happens next. Because, you know, this game, much like Blackstone Fortress, I'm assuming is going to have a bunch of expansions over the next year or so. Um, and this will kind of set the scene for the next one. You know, that's so cool. A, a sealed envelope at the end of the game, that's, that's just awesome. That is just, just awesome. War Scrolls. Oh yeah, for using uh, these models in Age of Sigma. There we go. Again, I'm not going to go through, oh yeah, lovely little uh, divider art. I'm not going to go through all these. You guys can have a look if you so choose. But there they are. And then there'll be enemy ones. Pitched battle profiles. What is this? The table below provides points, minimum unit size, and battlefield roles for the War Scrolls in this book for use in pitched battles. Spending the points listed in this table allows you to take a minimum size unit with any of its upgrades. Does that mean I could like just like use all of these models to like fight each other in a pitched battle? I mean, I doubt that the heroes are gonna actually. I don't know, but that's an interesting idea. Um, I've never played Age of Sigma. Um, wouldn't mind giving it a crack, and if you know I've got the rules to go with this, then who knows? We'll see what this is all about. But you know, this is more so for people that want to use these models in Age of Sigma. Not so much me, but who knows? Um, and then the Cursed City, ah yes, these will be the build instructions. They've got a picture of the sprue, how to build each one of these things. Yep, and there's some Dagny's there, so maybe it's just wrong? Because there was an errata page for his build, so interesting. Dagny, Dagni, whatever. Cool. Cool, all right, and that, that is the books done. Well, let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, this looks to be the final set of components. Let's have a look at the board tiles and the tokens. Let's open it up. All right, let's give her a slice, a slice and pull. Try to do this on camera without destroying any of the components. Come on, get into there. Yep. Oh dear. Man, come on now. You got this, Christos. You can do this. Come on, mate. There we go. Opening it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. Oh, yep, she's falling apart. Oh dear. <laughs> the victory was uh, called out too soon. All right, let's have a look see at it. Okay, so as you can see, they are... Uh, man, these board tiles, they are actually beautiful. Heaps of character. Really nice. They are gloss, which is a bit of a shame. It makes, you know, filming a little more difficult. A nice matte, you know, tile would have been lovely, but such is life. 
on the double sided, fantastic. With them, um, oh, yeah, out they come. They just they just want to be free. They want to be used. They're ready for it. But they are just they're beautiful. Look at that. Look at those lovely prints. Fantastic. Oh my god. I'm never gonna stop hitting this camera, guys. I'm so sorry. I hope you guys aren't feeling seasick. It's that bad boy. Yes, man, that is. I don't know, like, I've seen pictures of them already, but, you know, holding them in my hands and actually looking at them, they are, they are actually a lot nicer than, than I kind of originally thought. Um, there's a bunch more. I'm not going to pop them all out. They'll probably just, you know, some will fall out. But again, just look at that. Look at that interior. Just beautiful. Actually, really, really beautiful tiles. Lots of character, lots of detail. Yes, look at all those open coffins and all the blood streaming out of it. Man, it's so grim, it's so gothic. I love it, that is so sweet. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. um, bunches of tokens up along the top side as well, as you can see, skulls and freaking arrows and various bits and bobs. This looks like someone's freaking like lunch room. Just. Just gorgeous, honestly. Um, I think I've been most impressed with these board tiles. They are just so nice. Um, I would have loved there to be some sort of 3D um, like doorways, you know what I mean? Again, I keep talking about 90s Warhammer Quest. They used to have like a, you know, like a proper hard plastic doorway arch that you slotted each board into to connect them. And it really added something, I feel. Um, and I'm a little sad that they didn't go with that for this. You know, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for like sci-fi Blackstone Fortress, what kind of door you're gonna put there, but for these, you know, some sort of stone portcullis that you're going through would have been really, really cool. Um, instead, they've just got like these little like rectangular, like flip door things, which works good enough. Uh, like again, I'm nitpicking, but I would have loved to have seen, you know, some, some 3D doors that would have been freaking sweet. Yeah. Super cool. Oh, almost. Okay, almost there, guys. Um, ah, yes, cool. This looks like the uh, the drop off and pick up zone because in this you're actually riding aboard a Caradron Overlord airship. Um, so that's kind of like your home base. Um, and at the start of a mission, you're dropped down into you know this board tile from the airship, and at the end, you know you light these points to call the airship for extraction. Um, you know, actually, I really like that. I wasn't sure exactly how they're going to do it, whether you're going to have like a home base in the city or something, but having like a flying dwarven airship that, you know, you're trying to, I think the idea is you're trying to repair it or something to get away from the city, um, uh, slash save the city before the, the, the thing like breaks down. So that's super cool. I actually really enjoyed that as a, as a theme. And here's the other side. Bunch more tokens, bunch more, uh, you know, spots that, that is cool. Look at that. That is very cool. I love it. I love how everything's just splashed in blood and gore. That's, that's, that's my jam. That is my jam. Okay. And then the final one, the, the tracker and just tokens galore. Just mucho, never ending. Uh, even that ta that tracker is really cool. Like that is a bit of a hark back to like old school Warhammer fantasy art. Like, like this this bad boy is like very reminiscent of some of those old like you know it's the kind of the style that you would have seen in old school Warhammer Quest back in the day, back in the '90s. Warhammer in the '90s, people. Ah, what a time. Um, and then yeah, the flip side, same kind of deal. Okay, there it is, guys. That is all the components. She's a good one. Okay, so there it is, Warhammer Quest Cursed City. Um, I'm super keen to start having a crack at this. Um, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, hit the bell button. I know that's asking a lot, but you do you. You know, help me out with the whims of the great algorithm. I am trying to grow this YouTube channel. It's early days at this point. I'm just having fun doing it. And if you're having fun watching it, let me know. Have a crack. You know, comments in the bottom. Would love to hear what you guys think about this game. Um, you guys are going to see some updates on how I'm going with my progress in this in my, uh, my Let's Hobby videos. 
So I'll be doing regular updates when the, the models are built um, and then when they're painted. I'll just be showing you how I'm going as I'm hobbying along with this. I'm going to try and get it cracked out as fast as I can, but you know, I've, I've got a job and a wife and a baby. Um, so there's only so much I can do, but I'm going to fit it in wherever I can. I'm going to try and get this cracked out and then get some, some games filmed. I'm super excited. Um, I'm going to try it solo. I'm going to try it with guests. I'm going to do it all. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have a good old crack. So guys, you know, thanks heaps for watching. Uh, until next time, I'm Stoss. Happy Wargaming and be good to your mother.